This vlog is going to be about the Elder Scrolls series of games. Arena 1994 came out and then Daggerfall in 1996 and Morrowind in 2002 and Oblivion in 2006 and finally Skyrim in 2011. There hasn't been another one since, but there is reported to be at some point. There are different ways to get these different games and I'll be showing you each way for each game. The first one is Arena. It is currently free on Steam and you can just search for it and there it is. At this time, you play this game online. So you don't actually download it to your computer. You play it live via Steam. And in this video, I'm just going to show how to install the game, how to create a character, and how to get started playing it. I've actually never played Arena before, so this is my first time of actually even seeing the game live. So let's take a look here at what we need to do to play. You will very quickly see the DOS box pop up really quickly. That is the software that the Steam uses so that you can play this very old DOS game on a new computer. So there's an opening sequence here and we're going to kind of go through it very quickly to see how it all opens up and starts. So we'll kind of read through this um, to see how the game starts and kind of the history of it. Uh, again, I've never played this before. I, this is the first Elder Scrolls game. I've played many of the following ones that you will see, but not this one. So we're going to scroll through these and kind of watch a little bit. I have taken out the sound bed that's behind it so that I'm not talking over it. With this being the first game in the Elder Scrolls series, it's going to give you a lot of background information that I'm kind of speeding through here. Uh, if you decide to play the game, you might want to read through this so you can get an idea on the history of the Elder Scrolls and kind of the, the game history is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'll let you watch through that yourself. I did go ahead and create a character just to kind of get an idea of the character creation system. It's pretty basic. You can name yourself. You can be a male or a female. You can choose classes and uh, some of the basic things that you'll see in the future Elder Scrolls games are here and this is the beginning of that. So it gives you a little bit of background of um, kind of how, how and why things look like they do when you get to the fifth game in the series. You can play a female character in this game and as with some of the others in the series you can have some basic uh, changes here that you can make. You can add, you have a few extra bonus points that you can put them where you want them to give your character more strength, more magica, more speed, endurance, whatever that you want. And then uh, you can save a, you can fix all of that and then save it and re-roll, which is a throwback to the old uh, role-playing games that actually had dices. So they call it a, a re-roll if you don't like what you've done. So once you create a character, it's going to give you this little um, opening sequence and I kind of skipped over that too. And this is the beginning of the game. This is what it looks like. You start out in a dungeon, which I find to be interesting since I played the second game in the series and you also start out in a, dun in a dungeon. The next game in the series is Daggerfall, which you can get for free on Steam, but it's in rough form, both graphics and playability. However, the, there's a group of fans that created Daggerfall using the Unity game engine. And you can install Unity with Steam and they give instructions here on how to do that. And you can patch it so that some of the problems that made the game unplayable can be played. And there's all instructions on this web page that I'll show you, which I believe is uh, dfworkshop.net. There's also the recommended way to install. It says recommended method and that lets you install it with the Unity engine and makes a lot of fixes. You can just install it plain as is and it will run and play your game uh, much better. Uh, there's also a lot of mods that have been because they've put it in Unity, 
you are able to mod the game and make it look feel and play a lot better. There's a lot of instructions here that you can go over so that you can make sure that you are able to play if you had already started playing and you want to play those saved games with this new version. It, there's all kinds of instructions here on how you can do that. I did not. I started a completely new game. I found this wonderful video that I'll put a link to that this guy shows how this game can really look and it's amazing because they're using the graphics they had just enhanced them and it is amazing. I went through this whole video which I think is pretty much an hour long and kind of picked and choose the different mods that I wanted to include when I wanted to kind of make my game look a lot better. And I will be using this modded version of the game to show you how it looks. And again, these are just kind of showing you some of the things that I did to make my game look and feel better. It feels like a modern game instead of a 1997 game just using a few things. And I, this video that I used was really not that difficult. I would say an average computer gamer um, or less could actually use it to change their game and make it look a lot better. So for the gameplay that you're going to be seeing, that's the version that I used. Again, you get that wonderful graphic from the game box that I absolutely love. And that's what made me buy Dogger Fall in the first place when I found it in the bargain bin at my local GameStop. I'm going to show you the beginning and how it all looks when you first start out. I kind of skipped over this opening sequence because it's fun to experience that for the first time yourself. And I'm going to start a new game and show you how this looks from the beginning to the end to the beginning of the original, the play. I always start my characters in um, High Rock because I like to play the Bretons, which I don't know. They have skills and things that I like. Again, I could play a female character and then you can choose a class already preset or you can do a custom class as which I, I, what I always do. You want to start out with your primary skills being the skills that you're going to use the most because that will help your character advance faster. You can name your class, whatever you want to name it. You can put in the skills that you want to put. I'm going to show you like I start off with my primary skills. I will be skipping over um, so that you don't have to see all of this. But again, put the skills that you use the most as your primary skills and then second most as your major skills and then your miscellaneous skills. So you'll get to a place here where you can see that I've already done all of that. Once you get your skills selected, then you can choose special advantages and disadvantages. After nine times of starting over this most recent play, I figured out I needed to do three times the spell points for my character and this is because I like to play mage characters and if you don't do that you start off with extremely low magery and it makes it impossible to play magery most of the game because your magery skills are too low and they raise too slowly so I always start off with that advantage I also like to do a regenerate health and darkness advantage and that just helps me so my I'm not constantly dying in the dungeon. But as you can see, the skill advancement for my class, that little blade goes up. So I add some disadvantages. For me, I never use axe, blunt weapons, um, projectile weapons like uh, bows and things. I never use those things ever. So I choose those as disadvantages and it brings my skill advancement down just a little bit closer to average. So I just add in all the things that I'm, I'm never going to use and that does help out with your character there. I also choose uh, no uh, buckler uh, shields because I don't use them. So might as well make them as, as a disadvantage since I'm not going to use them anyway. And it again brings my skill advancement down to closer to average. So you can play around with these a little bit. You can also play around with your reputations with the various factions. And all of that again will help with your skill advancement. It also changes your max skill points per level. And I just leave it at eight. 
so that I'm close to average on my skill advancement. Here you get to name yourself, call yourself whatever you want, and then when you're done with that, you click OK. And then you get to choose your face. I always try to get a character with gray hair just because it makes me help with my amuse um, uh, immersion. In this section, you're trying to get the highest strength, intelligent, uh, will, agility, endurance, personality, speed, and luck that you can get. You can keep hitting that um, re-roll button and what that does is it's giving you more extra bonus points and it will change some of these uh, stats for you. If you are patient you can get a pretty high character and I kind of did that and saved it and then moved on but if you keep playing with that you can get your stats pretty high and here you can uh, add some bonus points to your primary major and minor skills you get six in each section so you can spread them out wherever you think it would best fit your character and you can see I'm adding in destruction and long blade because I know I use those the most starting out so I want to give myself as much of an advantage as possible and you can go to the Dagger of All Chronicles book her online information to find out how these skills are used and which ones will be important and necessary. Again, I like doing a custom character where I'm doing it myself. I also put it on very low and what that does is it makes the monster slow and not too smart. I like to play on easy on most games so I can relax and play. And here we go. So we're going to start off with this opening screen and I'm just to let you explore that yourself. And then um, you can, I'll let you check it out yourself. I think it's interesting some of these opening sequences um, and I just kind of flash through it a little bit just so you can kind of see how it goes. You start out, you are in a cave and it give, this is a tutorial cave. It shows you how to use, as a, if you hit yes on a tutorial section, it shows you how to move. It shows you how to equip yourself. It's going to show you kind of basically the basics of the game to get started. That's what the whole purpose of this dungeon is. However, if you will uh, choose to play through the dungeon, then by the time you are finished, you're going to be fairly well equipped for a new character and have your bag completely full. So let's kind of look how this looks to start out with. I'm going to equip my weapon that I had in my pack to start. And you'll notice these dungeons are super dark. And so it's a good idea if you have any kind of a lighting source, you start out with some torches and candles to use the torch to get a little extra light. And these dungeons have been redone so well, they are really creepy and it looks like you're in a real dungeon. First thing you end up doing is going into a room and uh, all of a sudden the first creature pops out at you and it's a rat. And I hate rats in all games. Uh, mostly because most of them don't have anything on them except their dead bodies, no treasure. And so once you've uh, finished that first kill, I highly recommend that you save your game. And in this new version with Unity, you have unlimited game saves. So I make mine very specific. I'm just starting out or I name it where I'm at or whatever the quest is or whatever. Just save, save, save. And here we have a bat. We're going to kill this bat with our sword and as you improve in game this is going to get easier and easier as you go along and as you can see what I'm doing is I usually move forward and backward so I hit it and try to back up so it doesn't hit me again and that's a very standard gameplay um, I want to show you how to kill oh, there's another rat let's go ahead and get this guy and they're creepy with the red eyes and the teeth and I've noticed in some modern games they're even worse nasty little creatures so as you can see, the, um, my sword is just swinging back and forth, and that's a new set button on the Unity engine where you hit it and it just swings and up and down, left and right. Um, you can rest to get your health back, but sometimes there's a, there's a monster or something on the other side of the wall and it won't let you rest. But if you move around, you'll find a spot and you can rest and you get your health back. And I did this... Uh, this is how I play. There's different ways of playing, but that's how I choose to play. Let's see how we can kill a humanoid that's going to walk up on us here. And again, I'm doing a back and forward mostly. You can also do left to right to kind of get out of its way. 
Um, sometimes they have spells and things, but eventually if you just, and I couldn't cast the shock spell that I have, my major is too low. So as you can see, I'm just using my sword and just trying to get rid of this thing and see if we can't get some good loot off of it to help us get started. In this case, we got some armor. So you can equip right from this window. You can put it on your body or your character so that you have, and you can see also there that I just very quickly, I put my mouse on the sword that I have and see if it was a better sword um, than what I was already carrying. And you can equip a cut two swords and you can there's a key combination to switch back and forth or you can use a shield if it's a one-handed sword so right here i'm equipping putting these things on my character so i can be a little bit better prepared for what's going on or what's going to happen next i've got my health down a little bit low oh there's a loot pile make sure you check around for these loot piles in this case there's a map and what that does is it gives me a new place to go that wasn't on my map before. And it's just a random dungeon that I can go to to get some experience and loot. And it tells me where it's at. So I can look on my map and look for the Castle of Copperfield. And so once I find a safe place, I rest and I'm healed up and ready for some more adventure. The third game in the series is called Morrowind, and my discs that I have for the game don't play on new computers, so I don't have it. And I'm not interested in purchasing it for $14.99. I think there's another version for $19.99. It's a visually very beautiful game, and I don't know what it was about it that I just never really cared for it. I know a lot of, of uh, Elder Scroll fans, that's their favorite. I just never really liked it. So I'm not going to show you gameplay or setting it up. Um, you can look at the videos and pictures and things here in Steam and you can YouTube it to see if it looks like something you would be interested in. I'm just not going to show it to you because it wasn't one of my favorite games and I just don't want to buy it and play it. So you can check it out here. The next game in the series is Oblivion, and I have to say this is probably my favorite of the entire series for a lot of reasons. I'm going to show you uh, how to start a new game, and I'll let you go through the opening sequence yourself here. It's a little each time it gets more advanced. This is the first time you get some more, much more advanced control over the way your character looks. And if you choose to spend some time on this, you can really do a pretty custom character, which is not bad considering when this game came out. And I'm just going to do some click, uh, some quick clicking here and kind of show you the sliders. Use a slider back and forth to change the various elements of your face. You're going to be able to change the elements of your eyebrows and your cheeks and your chin and your eyes so you can get pretty specific hair and I've seen a wide range of characters when I've looked at the YouTube videos of how much um, you can change the way these characters look um, including your skin tone and the color it's like uh, as you can see here it's uh, um, these sliders you can make it very customized for yourself when I'm playing my characters, I, I like to, I really like their eyes and I like to change a lot about their eyes, their sh the shape of the eyes, the colors of the eyes. Um, I'm real picky about certain things, the lips and the noses, and I'm not really doing it here in this sample, but it gives you an idea of the, some of the sliders that you can play with. Um, but I also really like it that I can change the hair and for me, the more I can make my character sort of be a semblance of myself, then I feel like I'm more immersed in the game. And more and more games are letting you have silver and gray hair. And I love that, that I can have silver and gray hair and make it feel more like me, even though obviously I would never take off with a sword and, and magic and go kill things. But I think it's really cool that I can make myself look more like myself. Look, how I can make the age of her face look a lot older. Um, and I think it's really cool that you can do that. In this game, for the first time in the Elder Scrolls series, you can do that and make yourself look very customized. 
And so I've got my, my character, and yes, I'm ready to go. And we start out in a dungeon. We're in a, actually a cell, and the guy across the way is smack-talking you. And this is going to be the tutorial to kind of show you how to move around in the game. And I'm showing you here how you, when you hit tab, you get all kinds of options that you can look. You can look at what you have in your inventory. Um, I'm trying to get out and it says I can't. And this guy is still smack talking you. So I'm going to let this sequence play through quite a bit so that you can see the gameplay. Again, this is my favorite game in the series. So I'm going to spend a little more time showing you what it looks like. Um, so anyway, you can see that they're having a conversation. Somebody, he's telling you, um, you know, what's he's smack talking you and then pretty soon somebody's going to come down the stairs and they're going to talk to you so you can see i'm trying to pick the lock when i'm clicking on it it's saying i'm trying to pick the lock and i don't have a lock pick and it can't be picked and so someone comes down the stairs and we're not sure who they are but they're coming directly to your cell and if you look closely right over to the side there is uriel uh uriel septum and so what they're saying is like they're having a conversation on what to do and they tell you stand back and you have to move back out of the way you've got to back all the way to the wall because they're warning you they don't want to hurt you so stay out of it stay out of the way and so they're coming in for some reason coming into this cell and so he's saying um uriel septum is saying i know you i've been dreaming about you and you can have some minimal conversation here uh, with him at the time and look how the conversation works he says something and then you get options to respond and you can click on those options and whatever you click on is what you say to the character that you're speaking to so then all of a sudden he does something you're like what the heck and this opening is coming in your cell so they're saying they're smack talking to you a little bit stay out of the way it's your lucky day and you just kind of follow them through if you stop following them they'll stop until you catch up with them. So if you lose sight of them or something, just kind of stop for a second and look around and they'll be stopped somewhere. So you just kind of follow them along and there's some minimum conversation here. They're just telling you to be quiet, stay out of the way. And so I'm gonna follow them down into here like what the heck is going on? Why am I following them? Also the game auto saves at that point. So if for some reason, you die and it is completely possible that you could it'll bring you back to this pot you can search these dead bodies and pick up some loot there and you'll see that i kind of grab a few things here there's also a sword laying on the ground and if i'm not mistaken it's the first halfway decent sword that you get i'm going to check my inventory here i'm going to arm myself with that um, so far i haven't found any armor but at least i have a sword and a potion of sorcery which i'm not going to show you the magic here um, it's been a very long time since i played this game so i didn't want to get too complicated but i did want to show you um, how this opening all starts up and i got my weapon wielded just in case that something happens and i need to help out checking these bodies in case there's anything else that i can use and there there again other npcs are talking to your real septum and having a conversation they're saying stay here don't try to follow us and so what do you do you try to follow them and what happens you can't follow them you can't get through the door so what do you do oh turn around there's rats more and more rats what the heck is up with rats you kill them and there's usually nothing on it but rat meat occasionally you find a coin or two which can be useful in the beginning of the game again you're going through a tutorial in this section and it you have a map so you can see where you, you the map kind of opens up as you go along so you'll see oh i've been there i've been here i haven't been there now i see that i do have a flare spell There's also some chests in this part, so you can get some more loot and get yourself loaded up with both armor and weapons and things that you can later sell. I'm also going to use a torch so I can see better parts of this dungeon that are really super dark. Um, and here's another rat. Jeez Louise. We just keep killing these rats and checking for chests and things that we might be able to pick up and um, kind of figure out it, these dun the dungeons in this game aren't too difficult um, 
that you can kind of see where you're supposed to go. Oftentimes there's going to be uh, a torch or something kind of marking your way and your map will also tell you where to go. There's a lock picking that's kind of important in, in this particular game. You can use spells later to open, but lock picking I found to be a really uh, useful skill that I kind of st uh, start off with in the very beginning. So again, um, you're just kind of wandering around. There seems to be a dead goblin or something laying there. I I'm playing on super easy mode, so a lot of these things that would be attacking you are actually dead already. So again, I like to play on an easier mode most of the time. Here it's telling me that I can cast spells by using the C key on my keyboard. And so I'm going to do a... I missed it. So you got, you got to get it pointed right at it. And you have to keep in mind that what you're shooting at is probably moving. So um, learning how to use your spells in this part of the game is really important. So just kind of remember that as you're moving along. And it's again, it's giving you uh, tips as you go along and how to move around. And uh, I'm going to arm myself, or I'm going to put some of this uh, armor on that I have found just to give me a little bit more protection because I have a feeling up ahead there'll be something else besides rats in this particular dungeon. So I'm getting used to the game at this point, getting used to my uh, inventory at this point, and getting myself kind of ready for some more battle here as we go along. So again, we just continue on in the dungeon and you can use your map to see where you're at and where you think you might go. The parts of the dungeon you haven't been to will be kind of, um, you won't be able to see them. And what do we see? There was a zombie. What also happened in this game that you might have missed is that that rat was attacking that zombie. So if I'd stayed back out of the way, the rat might have killed it or the zombie would have killed the rat either way. So again, it's part of making the game a little bit easier or you can make it harder and they all attack you. It's kind of up to you and your uh, way of playing. And so we're going to see if we can get this one. Yep, we got him that time. So we used our spell that time. I'm kind of alternating between my spells and my sword because I want to improve both skills. Um, I have found that in Oblivion, it is possible to be a 100% magic user at the beginning of the game and survive. Um, I just got used to having both a sword and a, a uh, um, and magic at the same time. I kind of got used to that in the previous Daggerfall especially. In this game, if you, if you choose certain um, aspects, you can choose to be a mage. There's different places where you can make some decisions where your majory will automatically regenerate. And if you notice my blue bar on the left there, it my majory has been regenerating as I used it, um, whereas my health hasn't. Although along the way I've been picking up some health potions, and I can't remember if I have a health spell to, spell to start off with. There's a healing potion. There's plenty of potions in the game, plus you can make some on your own. Um, so you can... Um, decide if you want to play as a strictly a mage character, strictly a melee character, or both. It doesn't matter. It's how, whatever your chosen way is. You may have seen that it says my light armor has improved. So the type of armor that you wear is going to improve as you go along. And what that does is it gives you a better armor rating as you go along. Uh, there's a lot of useless stuff in this game, like spoons and things you would never use and I don't know I haven't never figured out why most of the barrels that you see in the game useless they don't have anything in them that you can actually use uh, we come into the next part of this beginner dungeon and again I skip over the barrels because I've always found it to be a waste of time it says there's a goblin up ahead that hasn't seen me yes good time to try out that long distance spell that wiped him out before I even got to him so I can not get hurt or die. Um, there's a, also, lots I said, there's a lots of things laying around that you can pick up that are useless. They have pretty much no value, um, but you can pick them up anyway. Just you know, look at my map and say, oh, okay, I need to keep going straight ahead. I haven't been there yet. So that's how you can kind of um, keep track of where you've been and where you're going. I found the dungeons here to be so much easier. Uh, there was a little string right there and I forgot about it and uh, I almost walked right over it. If I had, I'm going to show you what happens. These big things swing down. You can use those to your advantage. You could have drawn, I could have drawn that uh, 
goblin or whatever he is and have him walk right into it and have those things hit him. There's many places like that that have traps in the games that you can use to your advantage. And so kind of keep an, out an, an idea of, or keep an eye out for those, including this one right here, which I just think is funny as heck. So you, I, it won't hit it. I can't hit it, but I can give it a nudge with my hand. It rolls down the hill. All those things roll down the hill, and they kill those things down there. If you get in the way, it's going to hurt you. So be sure when you use a trap like that that you're out of the way so you don't hurt your own self. Again, I'm looting these bodies to get as much stuff as I can. Uh, I'm getting close to being full. I have 150 weight in my backpack and I'm at 130 something. So I'm getting close to being full. You could be more selective if you want. I think I was kind of picking up pretty much everything along the way just so that when I would leave this dungeon, I was pretty full of stuff so that when I get to a place I can sell it, I can get myself some gold and, and to buy the things that I need as I continue on in my journey. So again, trying to get out of this place. Oh my goodness, here's a whole bunch more goblins. So we're going to take out as many as we can and loot as many chests as we can find. And, um, oh, this one, got, he got away. There he goes. Destruction skill has increased. So the destruction skill is when you use spells that are in the destruction uh, area so a category so I'm using a like a fireball or something spell and that's destruction and it's increasing my um, destruction as I go when the light armor increased again because that goblin hit me so that increases your um, your light my I'm wearing light armor which is what I prefer it's kind of better for mages to wear uh, no armor or light armor and so that's what I'm using and that's what got uh oh I'm over encumbered what that means is I have too much stuff in my inventory. I'm at like 150.1 is too much. So I toss a few things out of my backpack, get down to below 150, and I'm good to go. And you can see all the stuff this threw out, uh, th flies out when you drop it. And there's keys, uh, shortcut keys to be able to drop it, which you'll see in the, the tutorial will show you. Uh, again, I'm going to check it out here. I'm still below my 150. And, oh, I picked up a repair hammer. So now I can repair my armor. I found this to also be a useful skill uh, that I've always enjoyed playing, repair my own armor or pay someone to do it. I'd rather repair it myself if I could. So we're gonna check out and see what we got here. We're still below our 150 and we're still good. And I also try to remember to pick up lock picks. I forgot them on that chest. You wanna pick up all your lock picks you can find and uh, because you wanna be able to pick locks and there's a lot of great stuff in chests. In some quests that you are on, you have to pick locks or open it one way or the other. So um, I have often used a combination of my open skill and lock picking skill to get things open. You can be trained on those skills as well. And what I'm doing here is just double checking to make sure that I have gone into these areas and picked up all the stuff that I need to get to go out into the next section of the dungeon. When we get to this section of the dungeon, we notice there's a hole down there and all of a sudden there's the group that we were with. So we've caught up to them. We finished our, our tutorial dungeon and they're telling us, uh-oh, something's going on here. We're not sure what's happening. Looks like we're being attacked. At this point, you can either stay out of the fight or you can try to help. Uh, you got to be careful that you don't hit one of them and kill one of them because that's kind of a bummer. Although they're ready to kill you, but Uriel Septum says, hey, no, she, meaning because I'm a female character, um, he, Uriel Septum says, no, um, we, we need her help. And at this point, you get to choose um, some more that's going to help you on. I chose a sign of the mage, and that gives me some extra abilities for a mage. You can ask a few questions here um, that are real minimal. Again, you're not, you're, not, you're not able to get too much out of them, but he's telling you that he, see, he senses that you are important. And so uh, the guard tells you, you know, stay close by. You can ask a couple of questions here. Not much. They don't have much to offer at this point. So we're going to continue on and follow them 
and see if we can help as well. So we're going to grab our sword and into the next area we go. Oh, let's check and see. Nope, nothing for us. Looking for gold at this point. I've got so much weapon and armor on me that I'm, I'm practically overloaded. So we're just going to continue on down here. Um, I try not to run ahead of them just because I don't want to get involved in a fight that I can't handle. And all of a sudden they take off running and here we are again. Um, you know, at this point I can help, but be careful not to hit one of the good guys. I think I did accidentally hit him and he tells you, hey, don't hit me. Um, again, checking these bodies for anything that's useful, gold particularly. And coming to the next section and see what we got. Oh, and we're being attacked again. It looks like it's Mythic Dawn. Uh, they kind of transform, it's their, and that's part of the story. We don't know who they are. They're some kind of an assassin. And um, so we don't, know, we don't know yet who they are and why are they attacking and why are they hiding out. Um, I did do a, accidentally hit a thing here where it was sneaking around hidden, uh, which is a useful skill, but I haven't used it too much. I hit it by mistake most of the time. So they attack some more people, but you'll see that they waited for us because uh, we were further back. And um, we go through another door. They went ahead of us, and so we're going to follow them through. At this point, you don't really know what, you don't have a place to tell you where to go. Just follow these guys along through this dungeon, and eventually you'll end up, and he tells you to stay back. He says, oh, let me go check this area. And then he says, oh, it looks safe. So Uriel uh, Septim follows us down. And I'm looking around to see if we're getting attacked from behind or from front. And they find out, ah, oh, it's locked. And they think it's a trap that they, we've been led to this area here. Um, so they say, wait, there's this place that we can go over here. And so we're going to go over here and try to go down this other corridor. So again, I'm just following them along with my torch and my sword. And then we find out we're at a dead end. And they're like, oh, wait, they're behind us. And they tell the guard tells you, you stay here and guard uh, the emperor with your life. And so they go fight someone, and we are here. This gives Uriel a chance to have a conversation. He gives us the amulet of the kings, and he tells us to he's got a son and to find him. And before, and before you can do anything, he's killed. The Emperor has been killed. And he's, and he's asked us about that amulet of the kings. And you're trying to explain. I, he told me to take it. And he gave it to me and told me to find uh, Joffrey and to find the, er the new error. At this point, you're going to choose your class. And again, I'm just choosing things to get us out of this part. But again, choosing different things give you different benefits. And uh, it's kind of finishing up your character, basically. And um, so now he tells you, you need to go on your way. And we've, oh, these are add-ons that pop up. Uh, he did take my sword, by the way, to give it to a family member. So I have to get a new sword. Uh, but the add-ons pop up and it just says make it your current quest or just continue on. And so I'm sorry you're going to see a bunch of these because these are all add-ons. Because I have, uh, I believe it's the uh, Game of the Year edition or something. Or a special edition that has a whole lot of uh, extra stuff to it. At this point we're supposed to continue on. And we end up going into the sewers. Which is where we're supposed to go. We get a key that he gives us, and we have to go to the sewers. And again, these add-ons, just click, clicking through them. And if you have this one, if you have the add-ons, you'll see those pop-ups that come up. Um, and you should read them because they have a lot of additional um, uh, content to the game. And we get some more rats. It's like, are you kidding me? Is it rats are us or what? So I've got some more spells based on those choices that I made. I'm sticking with a fireball at this point to get us out of here, hopefully. Don't want to miss a chest just in case. We've got a few things that we still have a little bit of room in our inventory so we can pick up a few things here and there. 
and we're going to head over here as quickly as we can find the way out oh let's get some more mice man they have a rat problem so we're going to help them out with those rats before we depart get a couple more here open the gate with the key that we got and you can explore this area if you want a little bit more my purpose is just to get us out of this dungeon so that you can see uh, get to choose uh, you can edit at this point your class birth rate you can edit a couple things if you want to change but once you go out that's your character again I have more quests popping up and checking out my inventory trying to put my best armor and weapons on that I currently have um, I got the Ambient of the Kings that is in my backpack, so apparently I need to go find who I need to give that to. I've got a few spells and scrolls. I've got some other things that I can sell. And there you have a very quick overview of my favorite game in the Elder Scrolls series, Oblivion. The most recent game in the series is Skyrim. And this has a pretty amazing opening sequence and I am going to play it through to character creation and it's kind of a tutorial on how to get started so I just want to let you know this is spoiler time if you don't want to see this you should probably stop watching this video but I'm going to also have the sound bed play underneath so you can hear uh, the amazing sound of the beginning of this game You, are finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that Imperial ambush, same as us, and that thief over there. Damn you Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. Empire was nice and lazy. If they hadn't been looking for you, could have stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. You there, you and me, we shouldn't be here. It's these Stormcloaks the Empire wants. We're all brothers and sisters in binds now, thief. Shuts up back there. What's wrong with him, huh? Watch your tongue. You're speaking to Ulfric Stormcloak, the true High King. Ulfric? The Jarl of Windhelm? You're the leader of the Rebellion. But if they've captured you... Oh, gods. Where are they taking us? I don't know where we're going. But Sovereign Guard awaits. No, this can't be happening. This isn't happening. Hey, what village are you from, horse thief? Why do you care? A Nord's last thoughts should be of home. Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. General Talia, sir. The headsman is waiting. Good. Let's get this over with. Sure. Mara, Debella, Kinnereth, Akatosh, Divines, please help me. Look at him. General Tully is the military governor. And it looks like the Dalmor are with him. Damn elves. I bet they had something to do with this. This is Helgen. I used to be sweet on a girl from here. Wonder if Vilod is still making that mead with juniper berries mixed in. Funny. When I was a boy, Imperial walls and towers used to make me feel so safe. Who are they, Daddy? Where are they going? To go inside. Why? I want to watch the soldiers. Inside the house. 
now. Whoa. Yes, Papa. Get these prisoners out of the carts. Move it! Why are we stopping? Why do you think? End of the line. Let's go. Shouldn't keep the gods waiting for us. No, wait! We're not rebels! Face your death with some courage, thief. You've got to tell them! We worked with you! This is a mistake! Step towards the block when we call your name. One at a time! Empire loves their damn lists. Ulfric Stormcloak, Jarl of Windhelm. It has been an honor, Jarl Ulfric. Greyloff of Riverwood. Lokir of Rorikstad. No, I'm not a rebel! You can't do this! Halt! You're not gonna kill me! Archers! Anyone else feel like running? Wait. You there. Step forward. Who are you? Are you from Daggerfall, Breton? Fleeing from some court intrigue? Captain, what should we do? She's not on the list. Forget the list. She goes to the block. By your orders, Captain. I'm sorry. We'll make sure your remains are returned to High Rock. Follow the Captain, prisoner. Ulfric Stormcloak. Some here in Helgen call you a hero, but a hero doesn't use a power like the voice to murder his king and usurp his throne. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. What was that? It's nothing. Carry on. Yes, General Tullius. Give them their last rites. As we commend your souls to Aetherius, blessings of the Eight Divines upon For the love of Talos, shut up and let's get this over with. As you wish. Come on! I haven't got all morning!
My ancestors are smiling at me, Imperials. Can you say the same? As fearless in death as he was in life. Next, the Breton! Here it is again. Did you hear that? I said, next, prisoner! To the block, prisoner. Nice and easy. What do you see? It's in the clouds! Dragon! Legends be true! Legends don't burn down villages. We need to move, now! Up through the tower, let's go! Let's Another go up the stairs, quickly! We just need to move some of these rocks. This way, friend. Move! Goodbye! Last mistake. Side. Jump through the roof and keep going. Go! We'll follow when we can. <laughs> Hammond, you need to get over here. Now! Bada boy, you're doing great. Toral! God! Everyone get back! <laughs> Still alive, prisoner? Keep close to me if you want to stay that way. Gunnar, take care of the boy! I have to find General Tolias and join the defense! Gods guide you, Hadbar. Stay close to the wall! Prisoner, stay close! Bailout, you damn traitor! Out of my way! We're escaping, Hadbar. You're not stopping us this time! Fine! I hope that Dragon takes you all to Sovereign You go! Into the keep! Yeah! With me, prisoner! Let's go! Again in Solengard, brother. <laughs> Looks like we're the only ones who made it. That thing was a dragon, no doubt. Just like the children's stories and the legends. The harbingers of the end times. We better get moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. Let's cut you loose. There you go. You may as well take Gunnar's gear. He won't be needing it anymore. All right. Get that. Armor on. Give that axe a few swings. I'm going to see if I can find some way out of here. Ah, this one's locked. 
Let's see about that gate. to open this from our side. Come it's on. the Imperials! They cover! It's the escaped prisoners! Maybe one of these Imperials had the key. Did you find the key? See if it unlocks that door. Get out of here before the dragon brings the whole tower down on our heads. Damn, that dragon doesn't give up easy. Grab everything important and let's move. Dragon's burning everything to the ground. I just need to gather some more potions. Imperial dog! The prisoners are escaping! Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Kill you! See if you can find any potions. We'll need them. Done. Let's get moving. Ah. Oh. Trolls, blood. It's a torch. Hear that? Come on. Ah. Ah. I thought we drowned in the blood. Was Jarl Ulfric with you? No, I haven't seen him since. something in this cage. Ah, it's locked. Grab anything useful and let's go.
Pierce the noble empire in all its glory. Pshh. Don't worry. We'll get out of here somehow. are to wait until General Tullius arrives. I'm not waiting to be killed by a dragon! We need to pull back! Never should have come here. The way is clear. Let's see where this goes. Job. The rest of them will have to find another way out. Doesn't go anywhere. I guess we'd better try this way. Take this bow. Might take her by surprise. Go ahead. I'll follow your lead and watch your back. Almost there. 
That was close. That looks like the way out. I knew we'd make it. There he goes. Looks like he's gone for good this time. No way to know if anyone else made it out alive. But this place is going to be swarming with Imperials soon enough. We better clear out of here. My sister, Gerder, runs the mill in Riverwood, just up the road. I'm sure she'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. <laughs>